good to see each of you this morning as we gather to worship the Lord our God. In the bulletin, you'll find the many announcements that are there. Just a quick reminder on prayer concerns, and you can lift those cards up during that first hymn if you have a prayer need or concern that you haven't already uh, given into the office. Also wanted to uh, lift up our flowers today in honor of our director of music, Morris Williams, on his birthday, and is coming up on the 17th. Happy birthday, Henry Norris. We appreciate all that you do for us. The Women's Bible Study Series, you can look at that information, the Keeping Kids Safe. Um, I think I've got the announcement correct now on the hum. They are starting today with peanut butter and jelly. So that will be today and ongoing. So uh, if you are interested in that, just talk with Sam or Virginia or just go head on over there. They'll put you to work, that's for sure. And uh, it's a good ministry. Our trunk or treat is coming up. Looking for some transportation shares and uh, a couple of prayer concerns to lift up um, the uh, mother to Beth Chambers. We just recently learned that Elaine McKinney uh, passed away on August the 16th. So to uh, keep that family in our prayers. The Season of Peace Luncheon uh, insert is there for the October 3rd luncheon if you would take and, and you can fill that out and drop that in the offering plate. And then we have an uh, announcement from our stewardship uh, committee, Jim Akers, if you'll come and speak with us. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Good morning. I come to you today from the Stewardship Committee to ask for your financial support for the coming year. By now, most of you should have received a letter and a pledge card asking for you to prayerfully consider your support in 2022. Since early 2020, this church has gone through some tough times. The pandemic shut us down completely for a few months, and we reopened to very, very low attendance. Attendance is beginning to grow again, and we are on our way back. Linda and I are fairly new members here, but we say the same thing that all new members say. We felt very welcome on our very first visit. If there's ever been a time when this church needed your financial support, it's now. We're searching for a new pastor, attendance is still down, and our 21-year-old organ is beginning to show its age. Today, I ask that you prayerfully consider your support for the coming year and return your pledge card as soon as you can. We will get through these tough times together. Dr. Robert Schuller, a famous pastor and motivational speaker, wrote a book called Tough Times Never Last, Tough People Do. And I've learned that this church is full of tough people. Today, I ask that you pledge early and when considering your pledge, consider making this year your most generous. Thank you.
Please join me in the call to worship. <clears throat> Sing praise to God who rescues us when we fail. Sing praise, praise to God, God who walks with us on <coughs> our journeys. Even though we fail, God lifts us and places us on the paths of peace. Even though we stray, God finds us and brings us back to the lives of those. Thanks be to God whose peace-filled love is continually with us. Praise, Praise be to God, who has equipped us to share his peace with one another. Center of my heart and home. 
at all times, so my relationships will honor you. When I feel like I've been wrong in a relationship, help me discover ways to work on my own thoughts and attitudes. Develop me into a better person, Holy Spirit. Guide me in the truth of your ways and keep me on the path towards peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. 
Our, our to Old Testament lesson comes from Psalm 19, verses 7 through 10. Hear now the Lord's word. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The commands of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The instructions of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, Enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The rulings of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are these than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also they are than honey, and the drippings of the honeycomb. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading this morning comes again from the Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter, beginning at verse 21. In honor of God's word, I would also ask that all that are able to please stand. Listen now to the word of God. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus said to Peter, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him his debt. But that same slave as he went out came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii and seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. Then this fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, have patience with me, I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. But his fellow slaves saw what had happened. They were greatly distressed and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, you wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of God. God, we thank you for your word, the story of your grace. You may be seated. So as with many of the stories of Jesus, this parable of the debtors arose out of a question that was posed to Jesus. We're still in the middle of the discord uh, that Jesus is having with his disciples uh, from last week. And Simon Peter comes to Jesus in the midst of that talk and says, Master, if my brother or sister sins against me, how many times should I forgive him? Seven times? Even as Peter asks the question, my mind cannot help but think about children and how they will sometimes confess something that they have done wrong, expecting to get praise from their teacher or a parent because they are so honest. 
It's in that sense that Peter is asking this question, not expecting to be rebuked, but rather to be praised. Peter is expecting Jesus to say, Excellent, Peter. You go to the head of the class today. You get an A+. Everyone, look at Peter and learn from him. You see, according to Jewish law, Peter had the right to think that he was in the midst of doing something good. Scribal law clearly read, If a man transgresses one time, forgive him. If a man transgresses two times, forgive him. If a man transgresses three times, forgive him. If a man transgresses the fourth time, do not forgive him. So what Peter is doing is simply taking that scribal law, that limited forgiveness, <coughs> multiplying it by two, adding one, and then sits back with a smile on his face as if to say, now how is that for being such a great guy? And Peter surely must have been taken aback when Jesus said, you must forgive 70 times seven. Then Jesus proceeded to tell a story. There was a king who had a day of reckoning with all of his servants. He found out who one that owed him 10,000 talents. What is a talent? The talent is the amount of a daily wage for 15 years, approximately. And because he could not pay, he was about to give him it over to the jailer and his wife and his children that they would be placed into slavery. In response to the man's heartfelt pleadings, however, the king forgave the man the entire Debt. Talk about forgiveness. Whereupon that servant went to a fellow servant who owed him a hundred denarii. How much is a hundred denarii? Well, that's the amount of one day's wage. A small sum of money. Yet he demanded payment. The man pleaded for extra time and extension. But this forgiven king's servant would not hear of it. And he had the man thrown into jail. This incident got back to the king who became enraged. And the king called the first servant, the forgiven servant, and said that because of his conduct, he was now to be thrown into jail. His original debt was to be reinstated and payment was now due in full. Now the question is, what is it that Jesus is attempting to say to Simon Peter and ultimately to you and to me? Through the parable, Jesus says, Peter, you can be forgiven. Jesus also says, forgiveness carries a heavy price. And, Jesus says, a forgiven soul must be a forgiving soul. Let's take a look at that first part. Jesus says, Peter, you can be forgiven. However, Peter, you're starting at the wrong question. You're having the wrong kind of thinking at this particular point. You see, Peter starts in asking the question, Master, how many times must I forgive? Jesus responds, Peter, incorrect thinking, wrong starting point. The better question beginning question would be, Peter, how many times have you been forgiven? It's a stirring question. It is, of course, the proper place to start. And when our minds are properly oriented, we are more apt to approach personal injury with mercy, with grace. Peter, forgiveness is not based on what you must give or what you must do. Rather, forgiveness is based on how much you have received. The second thing that Jesus wants Peter to know is that forgiveness carries a very heavy price. The king was owed the 10,000 talents, of which I told you that was the approximate daily wage for 15 years. The point is that it was a huge amount of money, 
quite beyond the reach of a servant to repay right there on the spot. The story is saying to us that forgiveness carries a very large price tag, price tag to the one who extends the forgiveness. Have you ever thought that Jesus did not have to end the parable of the prodigal son in the way in which he did? Remember the prodigal son story? About how in the ending that the elder son becomes jealous and sulks. What if instead Jesus would have said this instead of going to the prodigal son first as he came back, if the father had gone first to his his elder son and spoke with him first? What if the father had said something to his eldest son that went something like this? Look, your brother has come back and frankly, I'm not sure what to make of it. He looks like death warmed over and maybe there's a chance that he's finally come to his senses. So with your approval, I'm going to take him back and hire him as a slave and give him a chance to prove himself again. And now we're not going to make a big deal out of this. We're going to play it very low key and see just how much he has matured. As far as anybody else is concerned, he is just another servant, but I think that you will agree that we can at least do that for him. So keep an eye on him. Now, if that had happened, do you think that the elder brother would have been as offended as he was in Jesus' true ending to the story of the prodigal son? Of course not. I dare say the older son would have relished that moment. And it would have been a logical way of handling things. This is precisely the point that Jesus is making. Forgiveness is not always logical. Forgiveness is not always reasonable. It is not pleasant. Forgiveness comes at a great price. The truth is, is that all too often we think that we have forgiven somebody and yet it's really not forgiveness at all. It may have been a condescending toleration, a quick dismissal, a cheap sense of pity, or just simply saying, uh, whatever. True forgiveness is not as easy as we like to think. And indeed, it goes to the very core of our being. It is perhaps the primary test than of our spiritual maturity. In the story of the prodigal son, the prodigal is welcomed back, not as a servant, but restored back to his place, rightful as a son within the family. That's what the ring and the robe and the shoes was all about. Symbols of being restored completely. The elder son is not given any protection at all in the story. What happened was that it cut him very deeply. Oh, we have our cliches. I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. The elder son might have said something like that, but he would have gone and done a little bit more, added an addendum to it. Don't tell me it's my responsibility before God to forgive him. And don't tell me my need for forgiveness because my need of forgiveness is not the same as his because I know that there is a difference. And let the record show, by the way, that I am the forgiver and he is the forgiven. I have the moral high ground. I will forgive him as long as he understands that he is not really restored to a full relationship with me. You see, when that king forgave his servant the 15 years of daily wage debt, a debt that he could not possibly repay, the king is saying that the servant was now restored to full relationship. No strings attached. It's as if the debt had never existed. The king absorbed the full weight of that debt. Why would it one who is estranged ever be compelled to return if there is no place 
in the world for them that is worth returning to. We only ask forgiveness when we think that we will be forgiven. You know that old adage, easier to ask forgiveness than permission? <clears throat> but there is a heavy price. In receiving forgiveness, there comes the great responsibility to forgive others. This is one of the lessons to Peter's question. Peter, Jesus says, forgiveness is unlimited. Do not try to impress God with limited mercy. And Peter, forgiveness is very costly to the one who forgives. And there's a third point. The parable finds an action that is for the one that is forgiven. The forgiven servant goes out to a colleague and demands immediate payment of a trivial amount of money, that hundred denarii, that one day's wage versus the 15 years of one day wages. Having been forgiven so much, the servant cannot forgive little. The forgiven servant cannot or is unwilling to find a merciful way to relate in the relationship. The king finds out about what has happened and again summons the servant before him. We better be careful about how we handle this whole subject of forgiveness because one day our life is going to be exposed. The whole point of the cross is to let us know that we all know so little about goodness. We know so little about godliness that at one time or another we all play a role in this messy and deplorable condition called sin and its heavy debt. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Peter, don't forgive seven times. Forgive 70 times. Seven. Now I don't know if anyone has ever sinned against me 490 times, but I can be honest and tell you that during my 62 years of life, I've sinned against God way more than 490 times. And once we understand the depth of our own sin debt, then we will forever be motivated to get involved in the process of forgiving one another. In Victor Hugo's novel, and I'm going to mess up the French, I think it's Les Miserables. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But in that story that has so many different plots, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful story, but Jean Valjean, he served 19 years in a jail for stealing a loaf of bread in order to feed his sister's family. Finally, when he is set free, a bishop is the only one in town that will befriend this embittered man. Valjean rewards the bishop by leaving and stealing some of his silver. Valjean is caught red-handed by the police. And the bishop, as you might remember, is called to the police station in order to come and to press charges. But instead of doing that, the bishop brings to Valjean his silver candlestick holders and gives them to him as if to try to fool the police into thinking that Valjean had not stolen, but had simply forgotten the silver candlesticks. It is that act of forgiveness and grace, grace, the receiving of what you do not deserve, it was that act of forgiveness and grace that forever changed Valjean, he extended grace to an orphan child and raised her as his own. He forgave the policeman who wanted to put him back into jail. Finally, at his death, 
holding in his hands were the two silver candlesticks that the bishop had given to him, signs and symbols and reminders of the forgiveness that had come to him and that had changed his life. What is it that so completely changed this embittered man's life? He learned from that experience how to extend mercy. Mercy is the not giving what someone actually deserves because mercy had been extended to him. Friends, every time that we enter into this sanctuary, we have a symbol of forgiveness that has been extended to us. It is a symbol that is right here in front of us. The cross. Accept the grace that is offered to you this morning and then in the name of the one Christ Jesus who has forgiven you a debt which you cannot possibly repay, extend then that grace to others. Abundant grace does not begin with you. Abundant grace begins with God. And it is freely extended to you. And once you have accepted it, then it moves through you to those whom you need. Follow Jesus and forgive your brother or sister from your heart. As Matthew 18 teaches us. And all of God's people said,
For those that are able, let us stand to confess the faith of our baptism using the Apostles' Creed, stating, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From hence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Be seated. Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, this whole thing of forgiveness is a difficult thing, and yet it is a necessary thing. Holy Spirit, as you come and teach and guide and work with us, help us to recognize when our heart is unforgiving. Help us in those times when we find ourselves saying, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. Your word tells us that as far as the east is from the west, you have taken our sin, you have taken our death, and have cast it away. What difference will it make if I do forgive? 70 times 7 or more. What if it's unlimited? We think that we are truly following the ways of Christ, and yet, how blind we can be, Lord. Forgiveness of debt means to wipe the slate clean, to let go of the hurt, Forgiveness is not just speaking those words, but it's actually letting go of that situation. And with me, maybe with my brothers and sisters, that is impossible. But with you, Lord, all things are possible. Teach us about the forgiveness about what Jesus taught Peter that day and uh, the other disciples about the forgiveness of that debt to that one servant, that 10,000 talents? Is it possible that that servant, when forgiven, went out and thought that a hundred denarii was more than 10,000 talents to him and he couldn't forgive? Thank you, Lord. That in this time of season of peace, that we might learn more about who you are and our union with you. May you fill us up more with you. And may we learn how to live in the moment-to-moment -moment parts of life but also learning that we don't have to carry all of the load ourselves, that we can indeed say, Jesus, I give everything and every wine to you. 
Restore my relationship with you, Lord, that I might receive and then be able to more readily reach out and restore relationship with my brothers and sisters, with my community, and perhaps, Lord, you would like to touch the world. These things we offer up to you, Lord, knowing that you are the one who is the beginner. It is your heart to bring forgiveness. May our hearts align with your heart. And may our sense of wound be healed in your mighty name. We pray all of these things and we give thanks to you we give thanks to you that you are ever present, not just for us, but for those that are around us. And that your desire is for their well-being as well as for ours. Allow us grace and mercy to grow. For these things we lift in the mighty name of Christ our Lord, who teaches us afresh each and every day how to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us offer ourselves unto the Lord. We sing and speak your praise, O God, grateful for the many ways in which you have healed us, bringing peace to our soul. Keep our hearts, our minds, and our spirits open to learn ways in which we can offer your healing peace to others. We ask this in Jesus' name, the Prince of Peace. Amen.
these cards. If you have received these and are using them, wonderful. If you would like to receive some of these, we have at least three more that are out in the North Lex, but if you need one and you don't find one, just catch up with uh, Amanda. She'll get a copy of them made for you. Also out there is the thanks cards. The season of peace has a time in it that is for reaching out to uh, the peacekeepers within our lives. A card of thanks that can be written by you, taken and written by you. You can choose to take and, and, and give it yourself or to bring it back to the church. And we will make sure that it gets to the entity that you would like for it to go to. To the police or to the firefighters, to a nurse or to a doctor, to an EMT, to anyone that you would like to see that go. We want to try and uh, facilitate that with you and encourage you to share your honoring and your desire to say thanks for the work that they do. So those cards are out there. And now go out into the world where God's forgiveness and his peace is at work in your life. And his desire is that it would work through your life to those that are around you. Go in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For he abides with you this day. And his promise is to be with you every day of your life. Amen. 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 Thank you.